Mom is at your Cajun Stork here. Did you know the type of birth experience you can expect for this pregnancy may possibly depend on the type of birth or lack thereof that you've had in the past? Today I want to explain to you how birth order affects your upcoming birth experience. But before I begin, my name is Midwife Kyra and I believe in truly natural birth because I know that it makes for better birth experiences. Consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to join in the conversation in the comments below. And don't forget to look in the description where you can find a link to my pregnancy complaint kits. So what does birth order have to do with your upcoming birth experience? This is a conversation I actually have regularly with my clients and didn't realize wasn't like public knowledge until recently. What we're going to talk about today is not true for all pregnancies and all birth experiences, but in general, this is a pretty standard progression on what you can expect with birth order and how it'll affect your upcoming birth experiences. So let's talk about your first pregnancy. When it comes to your first pregnancy and your first birth, you can expect a couple of things. Typically, if you aren't being induced and you're planning to deliver naturally without an induction, the first pregnancy you can expect to go about 10 days past your due date. Y'all, this is why we don't call it an expiration date. It's your due date. So you can expect to be pregnant longer than you thought, longer than your due date. But what you should expect for your first birth is a longer, slower labor as well. Remember, this is the first time that your body is going to be dilating and effacing and contracting. Even when you get to complete, this will be the first time that your body is pushing out a six or seven pound baby from your body for the very first time. And so you have to give your body some time and permission to take it's time to give birth. So for your first birth, you should expect not only to go past your due date, about 10 days, like I said before, but to experience a longer active labor than you will for any other babies in the future. So the average first time mom in general labors about two hours per every centimeter starting in active labor. So active labor starts at about four to six centimeters. Let's use four centimeters for the sake of this argument. To go from four centimeters to 10 centimeters, you can expect about six to 12 12 hours. Now, and so your first labor tends to be your longest, your slowest, and I'd like to use the word your hardest labor because you're not really sure what to expect. It doesn't mean it's more difficult. It's just kind of a not knowing what to expect, how much more painful it's going to be, how much longer it's going to last. And therefore, I find that moms consider their first labor to be like their hardest labor. But what happens with baby number two? Y'all, baby number two totally makes up for everything you experienced in baby number one. Birth number two tends to be your fastest, shortest labor ever. It's not uncommon for the second babies to come out short, fast, quick like lightning. In fact, a lot of moms who have had long drawn out first time labors are really surprised to identify active labor in their second pregnancy and boom, now they're delivering their baby. It happens so fast. The average second labor is typically, not always, but typically half the time of your first labor. So if you had a 12 hour first labor, you can expect a six hour second time labor. That doesn't mean it's gonna be six. A lot of moms have four to six hour active labors for their second babies. This is just long enough for you to identify you're in active labor. In your mind, your second birth's probably gonna be like your first birth, long and drawn out, and next thing you know, you're having a baby. So it's not uncommon to have second time moms be the ones who deliver in the car on the way to the hospital or their birth center, to be the ones who deliver as soon as they walk in the door for their second babies or to even have accidental unassisted home births because their babies came so fast or maybe they were in denial. Second births are the best and if you're pregnant with your second baby you can really look forward to having a good second time birth. Now what about baby number three? Baby number three is so unique and also hey to all you baby number threes over there that's me too I'm the third baby. Baby number three follows no routine no estimate, no anything like babies number one and two. They don't follow the rules. I like to call them like a, pardon my language, but like a crapshoot. Babies number three do whatever they wanna do. So if you've had two previously decently fast labors, baby number three could be either your fastest ever labor or your longest labor. I have so many stories I can share with you of moms who had two prior excessively long labors to give birth to baby number three like that because again, baby number three just doesn't follow suit. 
They get into funky positions sometimes. They take longer to come out or they're the shortest to come out. They just don't follow any rules. So if you're pregnant with baby number three, I don't want you to have any expectations for your upcoming birth because baby number three does what they want and we just kind of go with the flow. But here's the good news. If you guys decide to get pregnant and have more children after baby number three, everything just goes uphill from here. Baby number four often comes out like baby number two. Baby number five often comes out like baby number four. Baby number six, eh, sometimes they like to come out like baby number three. If I ever have trouble with births, it's always baby number three and baby number six. They just don't follow suit. But number two, Number four, number five, number seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, every baby after that typically comes out like birth number four. And like I said, birth number four tends to come out like birth number two, which is almost always a good one. So unlike your first birth, where you dilate about one centimeters every two hours, for your second, third, sometimes, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, for all your other births outside of your first birth, you tend to dilate two centimeters every two hours or one centimeter every hour. That's the general progression of the way that you can expect your upcoming labor to go. So with that said, what pregnancy are you on right now? What birth are you coming up to? Well, if you're a VBAC, this is a vaginal birth after a C-section, this might lead you to the question of what happens if I've been pregnant before, I carried to term, but I had a C-section? Well, this is a great question. What we experience with VBACs is vaginal births after cesarean sections. They tend to progress like a second birth all the way up until the point where you had your C-section. And then from that point, they progress like a first time mom. So for example, let's say you had your last C-section at eight centimeters dilated. You're gonna progress like a second time mom all the way until eight centimeters. And then at eight centimeters, you can expect to progress like a first time mom, dilating about a centimeter every two hours for eight centimeters, nine centimeters going to complete. So it's really cool to watch how your body can do this and how birth order really affects your upcoming birth experiences. What pregnancy, what birth is this coming up for you? Let us know in the comments below and let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I will see you at one of my other Midwife Monday videos up here. Thanks for watching this Midwife Monday. Bye-bye.